Hello everybody, it's Argal here and welcome back to another episode of Avant 3 here on the FTOG server. What we're gonna get started with first is make these guys quiet. Because now we have extra utilities too. I'm so happy just for this block. They were driving me bananas. I still have 19 emeralds. I used um 10 so far today, so I had 29 I guess. Because I made, let me give you guys a little bit of a roundup of a couple of changes I did. I made a new pickaxe, a cobalt pickaxe with a cobalt head, an ardite rod, and a paper binding. And all I did is put twice redstone on it and a silky gem. This thing right here, I'm sure you guys are familiar with that right there. And that's just gold with string, four times, and then an emerald in the middle. And the other nine emeralds I used over here to make one of these block of emerald, emerald, linium, whatever it's called. Um, because I needed grass. I needed one block of grass because I made um, nature seeds. Uh, earth seeds, sorry. The earth seeds needed grass. Grass, clay, um, dirt, and maybe something like that. But yeah, I had no other way of getting grass. And you guys see a couple of things have changed over here. I did a lot. I spent a lot of time here. A lot, a lot of time trying to tweak this. Oh, you guys just saw these lights come on right here. This one, that one, and that one. They're going to stay on for 20 seconds now. And then the redstone signal is going to turn off. And I'm going to stay like this so you guys can see it. Reason being is, guys, when I had this going in the beginning, um, shortly after the episode, I had that third zombie head. I got a couple more, actually. See, now it's off again. So now these farming stations are turned off. Um, but when I get got back, I, I was waiting for some canola to, to accumulate, right? We only had that one going and the wood farm over there. And it just, it didn't, it wasn't able to keep up, right? I just kept training out of power to the point that I needed to get the coal generator over here to jumpstart the canola press again because I was completely out of power. And then I did some investigating, trying to figure out what is going on, right? And that is because these farming stations always draw 40 RF a tick when they're running. Okay, always. So that's 200 RF a tick with five of them. With two, it was only 80, but I didn't make enough canola. So first, what I did is I scraped together all my uh, zombie rotten flesh and so on. And I've also been really on top of making zombie essences over here. Because I made fertilized dirt right there, which is rotten flesh, bone meal, and dirt. And you get two of them. And canola, you can plant on it, right? And then I also used 17 blocks of lapis to make this greenhouse glass from actually additions. And this one now you guys see constantly gets um, a bone meal effect, I'm going to call it, the, the sparklies here. So this canola field here, because of the fertilized dirt plus the greenhouse glass, is growing quite fast. So that one is always on. And since I tweaked it, I'll show you guys in a second what I did. I am now up to 138 stacks of canola. I put in an emerald upgrade in here, 13 times as much. And the same on the wood, I think. Yes. Um... And I also added two more capacitor banks. So if I actually do something in the strains, I just, you know, have a little reserve. They're cheap to make. So now we got nicely, it's it's a very nice setup now. It's self-sufficient and I have lots of power. Um, the wood, the tree farm filled up very fast. It was full almost instantly. It's almost full now, but apparently it's turned off. Okay, and I explained that to you guys, what I did, but I have to go underneath. Um, this guy right here has a redstone upgrade, just for redstone and uh, the upgrade. What is this called here? Upgrade template. It gives that, and that gives out a redstone signal depending on how full it is. So when it's full, it gives out, a, I haven't gotten a redstone signal 15, but I'm getting 14. And it's a little bit buggy. I'm going to have to see if I can change something over. Um, and also this one, you guys see here, active with signal and D3, uh, well, actually all five are active with signal. And I have a lever on every one of these lamps, so I can override it. I can just keep it on if I want to, okay, no matter about the timer underneath. So that is this. So these four right here are now currently off because they don't have anything to do. So that saves me uh, 160 RF a tick. And underneath, it's very simple. I went almost, well, on this one, I did go vanilla right here. That's the one from the from the tree farm here, right? 
from this draw right here, I have a redstone conduit coming down. And it just submits the redstone signal here that I'm reading with a comparator. And I'm comparing it here. I have a lever with three. So I'm pulling, pushing in 13. A redstone signal of 13. Because first I had the lever right next to it, but that didn't work because it never reached 15. So it never turned off. But the signal now is on, meaning the drawer is full. Okay. So I'm inverting this here with a redstone torch that goes back. I know what the issue is. Wow, I can't... No, wait, this is power. Never mind. I just thought I'm running the redstone conduit back over here, but no, it's it's right here. That is it. So, no signal, it's off, and when it falls below, um, when I take out a stack, the redstone signal is less than 13. The comparator compares it to 13. It's like, nope, I'm not stronger. It turns off, then the redstone torch turns on, and it turns on, gives the signal to the farming station so this is automatically shut off and i have uh upstairs again on that um on that redstone lamp i have an override which doesn't make any sense i just wanted it to be uniform that was it and underneath here i ran redstone conduit to every one of these farming stations but this one here because this one i don't ever see me turning off it's always just gonna give me canola okay but what i did over here is I have a sequencer here, and I'm going to explain the sequencer, how it works in a second. But I also have a lever over here. If I flip this lever to on, you guys see it came on. Now all farming stations are running always. So I have a master override for all these three farming stations if I want it. I'm probably never going to use it. You know what? Let's just get rid of this. There's no reason to have this here. Because if, then I'll just go upstairs and flip them on the redstone uh, lamps. But anyway, sequencer here. Now, don't run away. It, I had no idea how to use this first. And then Daddy the Body and Brink the Gamer both helped me out with, you know, figuring out how does this work. Once you understand it, it's very simple, guys. Every one of these squares here is a tick. Okay? So we got 64 squares. So when it starts up here and this delay is by default set to 1, it will take 64 ticks to get down here and then it starts over again down to here, over again, and so on. I hope that makes sense. Every black square means it does not emit a redstone signal. Every white square, you guys see, you can toggle them on or off, it does emit a redstone signal. And then down here, you have a few different settings, uh, loop, loop two, loop three, loop four, step, yada, yada, yada. I'm going with loop one. Loop the cycle all the time, ignore redstone signals. So this thing will just go here through the 64 boxes over and over. All right, so because this is 64 ticks, I wanted these up there to be off for five minutes. So it gives the plants enough time to grow and then run for 20 seconds. It, it is about 12 seconds for the farming station to go through the entire field to harvest it. And then one more time through to replant everything. So I gave it a little extra time just in case, right? So five minutes and 20 seconds is this entire thing here. Okay, if... Just take 320 seconds, 5 minutes plus 20. 5 minutes is 300 seconds, plus 20 seconds where I want it to be on. So that's 320 seconds divided by 64 comes out to 5. Okay? So I knew every one of these boxes represents 5 seconds. But in real life, with delay of 1, it's only 1 tick. So 5 seconds times 20 ticks, because uh, in Minecraft, 1 second has 20 ticks, is 100 so i knew that i needed to change the delay down here to 100 and that means every one of these fields is five seconds so now it gets down here all the black ones are five minutes and then this is 20 seconds and then it starts over and that is all that does redstone signal going out you don't need to have anything going in because i have it set to loop ignore redstone signal i hope this makes sense and then i explained it well enough um it's very simple once you figure it out and there's lots of uses for this i have to say Okay, now that was that, and I did a lot of mining also between, of course. And right here for now, we have the fire, water, earth, and nature sprout going. You guys see I got a bunch extra already, and it's just doing its thing. Um, I, I'm not worried about this, um, and over here I got skeleton, lapis, because I wanted to get my lapis back, because I used 17 blocks over here. I can probably stop it now, because I have so much lapis from, from just mining, right? 
But you guys see, we got tons of stuff. Not really in a hurry. And because we had update yesterday, um, where I added extra utilities too, we now also have the watering can. It's full already, but when you make it, you need to right-click water to fill it. And it does work on this agricultural expansion, by the way. You guys see it is growing slowly around it and so on. But before we actually had that, let me fill it up again. And now it's full. But before we actually had that, I made the ring of growth for actually additions, which is really neat, guys. It holds a million RF. And when you just hold it in your hand, that's all you got to do. You just stand here and it now acts like, you know, bone mealing the area around me until the million RF are out. So I just wanted to show you guys this. It's, it's very neat. Um, I actually have an idea on how I could make an AFK farm with this with a player interface that we might make one day. So it pulls the empty one out of my bar and then sends it to a capacitor bank to fill it. And then it comes back on my bar automatically. Um, that is set to certainly something we can do here in the future. Let's see here. We're already 11 minutes in. Holy shnikes. All right. What else did I do? Uh, I just made a, a stone hammer right here with a obsidian upgrade for mining. Nothing special. There's my fortune pick that I replaced this one with. I think that's it. Yeah, of course, there's just a little something missing over here. If you guys noticed, I spent last night, I watched YouTube and I took down this entire hill here. I, I got tired of it. I'm like, you know what? Um, looking from over here, I did say that I want a lot of this island gone, but I think I'm just going to shave it down when I need it right here. See how far that temple is away from here. I think we have a good enough distance that once I make my bowl right here, that we are far enough away from it. And it looks nice. Okay. I, I wanted the area to be secure. I cannot have anything come in anymore. And you know, everywhere I pulled down the stone brick and the spruce wood, which I have so much. Um, poor piggy. Um, oh yeah. Check it out. I made the item magnet from quantum flux. Um, cheap. I had a lot of these ender crystals from the ender farm. And right there, Darkstone is also, it's, it's super cheap, okay? And what I like this about this the best is I have mine bound to a key. And when I press that key, it's now on. And I press it again, it's off. You don't need to have it on your bar and you can toggle it on or off. I think that's really convenient. So, and in the front, I started with a little bit of decorating. Just a little bit, you guys, a little hedge. And like I said, this goes all the way around and there's a fence gate. Nothing can come in anymore. Uh, no more creepers, no more zombies, nothing. I am completely proof now, luckily. Um, I added this little decoration here with some obsidian pressure plates. And I kept the water strainers right here. And I'm actually using the first time the solid one, which gives you so much stuff. Look at this. And I made two fishing nets from actually additions. You just, you have to place blocks underneath and then place it just above the water. Then you break the blocks underneath so it hovers like that just above the water. Place a chest on top of it, and it gives you random stuff, just like you've seen in Avant 2. And this is what I'm out here in, like, bows and enchanting books, and I don't know what else. I just put them up. They don't cost power. They cost one diamond each. Um, uh, the the diamantium, whatever it's called from Actually Edition. So, all right, that is enough now uh, rambling, because we got to get busy here. Today, we are going to get started with Psy. But before we do that, guys, I'd like to make myself a new tool. And I wanted to show you, well, by the way, did I mention yet we have new is extra utilities, mechanism, and also storage network. Um, so what is it called? The atomic disassembler, atomic disassembler, and the drill. These two right here are really cool. They, I think they both have their pros and cons, and I want to tell you how I weight them. The atomic disassembler is awesome. It because it has the vein mode and it also works on wood but you cannot enchant it ever and nothing so it is an it's a fantastic tool and the drill is awesome because we can upgrade everything but you do not have vein mode or it doesn't work on wood but i still decided i'm gonna go with the drill for now because i can get all these upgrades and especially this one right here the silk touch i want silk touch um you guys know I love Silk Touch. I always like to have it. I'm most likely... I don't know if I'm ever going to use this again. I made it, but it was only one uh, one emerald. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to make this drill right now. So we need the drill core for that. And then we toss that in here to get the basic drill. You can color them also here. Um, see, does it show you? 
probably just a die. Uh, install this means yada yada can also be dyed with the 16 colors by crafting it together with one. So we could make this a different color, but I don't care what my true color is. All right, and I want to make the silk touch augment. These are emeralds, diamonds, and another advanced coil. And check it out. Am I going crazy or did this recipe change? I thought this was four iron nug uh, iron ingots right here. Now it is surrounded by eight gold nuggets. Uh, I'm sorry, four gold ingots, and now it's gold nuggets. So it's actually cheaper now to make this advanced coil, which I'm not going to complain about. But here's our silk touch. And then we also want the speed augment one. And here is the cake you got to put in here for the speed augment two. They only stack, guys. You cannot just put the two. You need the one. The same for fortune here. You need to have this one first before you put that. And the same one for the size. You need to have three if you want to add the five. Okay. And the way you do it is let's go ahead and charge this puppy up real quick. I added a capacitor bank right here because I got tired of running around over there charging my ender porters right here. And yeah, that's it. That was pretty much it. But now I also need it for that. And it holds 500,000 RF. We could also make a battery for it, which I'm going to make another day here. Not today. You can put in there. So if you go mining, it lasts you a lot longer, right? So, come on. And charged. Awesome. I really like this drill. And then shift, right click. It opens this right here. And we're going to put um, silk touch, speed one, and speed two. Speed three is nice to have, um, but it's really fast. Check this out. I mean, this is on grass, guys. Grass usually takes a long time, right? And I, I really like this drill. It works on dirt, on stone, and so on. But like I mentioned, it, it works really bad on wood. It's just like you're breaking it with your fist. So that was the one pro that almost made me choose the atomic disassembler. But I just like my silk touch too much. Anyways, it is time to get started with Psy. I'm, there's many mods I want to get started with. Botania, Blood Magic, so many, right? Um, also, some of the other tech mods. With um, I was going to start with with um, Mechanism today because I really want these guys right here. That's the only thing I really care about right now is the free runners. I really like them because you don't take any fall damage and you have uphill step assist and so on. But I'm going to wait off on that. Uh, I'm, I don't know when I'm going to make it. But anyway, I want to get started with Psy because Psy is... Is it's very hard if you don't make an actual tutorial couple of episodes it's not that easy to explain because there is no set way of doing it and i'm, I'm gonna show you guys what i mean by that but psi is pretty much a um it's a spell system okay this is the psi mod and it's a it's a spell system that uses these guns here they're called assembly uh, but they look like little pistols right and you use those to cast spells. And there is no set spells. You make all your own spells. And you you have to work your way through learning these. Okay, how to use them and unlock them, unlocking them via the tutorials on Psy. And today I'd like to get through as many of the tutorials as we can. Um, so you guys can play along. And then maybe, you know, we have time to make one useful spell that we're actually going to use. And then over the course of this series, guys, every other episode or maybe every episode, I'm going to probably show you guys a new spell that I'm like, hey, you know what? I was thinking of this, uh, whatever, example X, Y, Z that I think we could make with this that would have make our lives a lot easier. And then we'll make that spell together and so on. But in order to get started with Psy, you press the button C. That's what you do. Right now. And then this tells you this is the start of the tutorial. Now, today... We're going to go through these tutorials. I'm not going to read this stuff to you besides this one part here where it says um, you need to, you know, make Psy dust. And to get Psy stuff, dust, we need a cat assembler and an iron cat assembly. And then we throw redstone on the ground and shoot it with the gun. And then it makes us that Psy dust. But for the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to, you know, let you guys read the, the tutorial yourself because it's a lot of reading. And I'm always just going to read it myself and then we'll make a uh, a spell together to get to the next level. So right here is a cat assembler. Um, it doesn't get any easier than that. And right here we need to make our first iron cat assembly. I don't know if you're actually supposed to say CAD or cat. Because I think CAD means computer assisted drawing, doesn't it? I don't know what it means here. Probably not that, but 
anyway, so we got these two. And I think for now, I'm going to put this cat stuff over here. Because we're always going to run outside to test our spells, you know. I don't want to blow stuff up in here. All right, there we go. And I think that you don't need anything. Uh, when you... You see how I have it selected? I think when I press C now... No, okay, let's see here. Keep size, you need to start crafting. Uh, you know, place down the cat assembly and put the iron cat assembly into it. To construct the very bare bones, all right? There we go. That's... You just needed to put it in here. We can put batteries and extensions and stuff on here, but now this makes our first casting... Ah, that's what cat means. Casting assistant device. There we go. Oh, that's quite a noise there. Awesome. <laughs> Got a little pistol going on here. Let's see here what it looks like. Yay! <laughs> I still love this stuff so much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why this gets me so much. Anyways. So, let's go ahead and let's just do 10 of these. I don't know. We're probably going to need a few of them. And I need to turn off the magnet. That'd be helpful. Uh, 10, 9, 10, toss it. And let's see, is it, it's right mouse click. Oh, bam, level up. You got one level point. Unequip your cat and press C to use it. All right, so now we got this stuff. And just like the tutorial says, we're going to unequip this. And now when we press C, you see that opens the tutorial section. Tutorial one. Uh, oh, yeah, now we have one point, Okay. And now it tells you here we're gonna learn these bugs. Uh, these bugs. I'm reading debug. We're re we're learning the bugs, and and then you click here to learn. That's the only one we can learn. And then you read through all of this. Um, yeah, that's a lot of reading here, guys. So I just read this whole entire tutorial one here, and I must say it is very well written. Um, it explained everything that we need to do now. Uh, props. Um, it's not easy usually to write that in game. Oh, it's really nice. It's telling me what we need to make next is a spell programmer. And then it tells us that we're going to need to upgrade our cat, our casting assistant device here. And we can make some parts here, like a cat socket. I think that adds how many different spells it can hold. This one right here is a core that allows us to make more complex spells. And this one here is a battery. Um, I think that is gives us more of that power on the right hand side. And then I also made the last thing here, just a colorizer. I want to see what that does, right? And then also last, there is some spell bullets here. I'm just going to make one, but I got a few ready here. Um, so see what we can do with that. And we're going to pull this spell programmer right next to it. And then we need to upgrade this thing here. And it says you can just put it back into here. I thought that's what it said. Am I not putting this in the right slot? Huh. I thought I was able to break this apart. Let's see here real quick. Um, you start it. No. Yeah, that's it. Bell programmer. You don't have to make another assembly. You can put your current cat in your crafting grid to revert it. Okay, there we go. So there, now it's empty. All right, cool. So let's put this in here. All right, and it shows here, let's see, efficiency 70, potency 100, and all zeros. Let's see what this one does. Bandwidth five. Um, I wanna, I wanna test this here, guys, sorry. I wanna know what is what. Because I think, yeah, when we put this in here, no, that's the wrong one. When we put this in here, we don't have any slots here. That's what it is. This is where you put these bullets. We don't have any. And I'm guessing that that is what this thing right here does. This socket. Bandwidth 5. I'm sure it's going to open 5 over here. We'll see in a second. The spell. This is the color. That doesn't do anything. Overflow 100. And then this here... Complexity 10. Okay. So now if we take this out and put it in here, it opened four. What gave us four? Ah, sockets. So that was that cat socket. Bandwidth five, sockets four. Okay, cool. So we have the first one. It didn't really color it that much. I thought the whole gun will turn red, but oh well. So now the next thing is because we learned... 
um, that first tutorial, we this is where you make these spells, okay? And you can make them in any way you want. This is just you limit it to this size. It can't be bigger than this. And anywhere you click here, right click, it says, and we have these two spells now. And it says we need to put the caster and we need to put the debug. This first one here is pretty much just to show you how to make spells, okay? And you guys see there's a red X. We cannot make it like this. And when you select these, you guys see there's no panel over here on the caster. We can't do anything with this, but the debug says we could add a number. I think that red dot in the middle here means it's not required. It's just you can have it. But this right here, we need a target. And the debug, the trick, everything, I guess, while they explain it is a trick is how you interact with the world, how you do something. Okay, and we want to do this, we need to have a target, the caster here. So when I click on the left one, you see it now connected this to the left and we got the green check mark. And it's going to tell us here complexity one. It doesn't use any potency, apparently nothing, nothing. Bandwidth two, spell width or height largest. Not sure what this is for yet. But anyway, so now that this is in here, we take our spell bullet and then just right click this. You heard the dunk. And it's called debug because in here that's what the name is we can name it whatever we want i also learned that you can only have one of these in your inventory if you have more than one it doesn't work you can't do any spells all right and then we put it in here pull it out and now we have it here and now when you hold this gun it'll check by the way on the right hand side you guys see we have 200 that goes up by every level we get and when you hold down c we see the spells here and right now we can only have four. So let's select this one. Okay, and now when I right click, you guys see, level up. It gave us a uh, uh, debug here. Whatever that is, it's me, where I'm at, what overworld, what coordinates, and so on. Again, it's just to teach you how to use this. And if we want to make more Psy Dust, let's make another five here. You know, right now I can't shoot this. I keep getting the debug, but when you select an empty one, then you can use it again. So empty, you need to you use to make Psy Dust. Good. All right, and then of course, as far as I know, we can put this in here and take out spells and whatever. I don't think I'm gonna need this debug spell. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Um, and I'm actually gonna open my notepad right now on the other screen. What I'm gonna do here for today is, you guys see down here, export to clipboard and import to clipboard or from clipboard. I'm going to export every one of these spells that I'm doing here today and also in the future and always put them in the description of my video. So if you don't want to do this yourself, you're like, you know, I don't, it's, this is too much work, whatever. You can simply copy it from the description. So check it out here. I'm exporting it right now and now I'm pasting it on my other screen, which you guys don't see. Um, actually, that didn't work. Ah, oh, must be holding shift. There we go. And... No? <laughs> Why are you no worky? There. Hmm. I'm not getting what I want on the clipboard. Programmer help. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um. So why can I not do this? Export to clipboard. What goes up here? Oh, I think you can put the bell bullets back in here. No? I don't know what this is for. I have no idea, guys. I don't know why this doesn't work here for me. It did work. Okay, for some reason now it worked. And now let's go ahead and see what does it say here. Delete. If you press the delete key, hovering over or selecting it and pressing delete, that deletes that. And if you want to um, clear the whole thing, it's Control shift delete Control shift delete And now it cleared the whole thing. So now let's say I'm copying this from my other screen and I'm clicking here on import. So I'm holding down Shift and clicking it. See, it puts it there. So that's going to make your lives easier if you want to just follow along, but you don't want to do this yourself. That is how you do it. And you'll see them. I'll label them like this is going to be called tutorial one. And then you're going to see a string of numbers and letters and braces uh, and so on. Anyways. So now that we got this, we're not holding anything, so we press on C. Now we leveled up, we're gonna learn tutorial two.